Hello and welcome to the DC United Kingdom podcast. This is season three and it's episode 13 um, of the season. Can't believe it. It is a bit crazy. Um, as you'll see, alongside me over here, I have got a debut scoring defender. His name is Brendan Heinzeichel. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good, mate. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so your debut goal, I've always got to talk about that because, you know, everyone's asked me to ask you about it. What the heck were you doing? And how the hell did you hit it so hard and it went into the roof of the net? Yeah, well, what was I doing? That's a... That was, <laughs> what were you doing? That, did you not have a nosebleed? I know. Normally defenders can't cross into their <laughs> the opponent's half. But no, no. I mean, that I've said it a couple of times. That's just the style that, that, that Hernan plays. And, and, you know, so... Sense of defenders, if, if you are not part of the help in the back, helping with defending the forwards, then then he encourages them to get forward and, and, and to help with the attack or to to kind of be in a position that can help if, if we have, you know, counterattacks or whatever. So I happened to be up there a bit because yeah. the ball was on the left side. I was playing right central defender and I felt we had enough numbers in the back. I wanted to just kind of be an outlet to kind of get the ball moving. But when the ball ended up coming to me, I said, well, hey, this is not, this is not, too bad of a chance to shoot and it lined up really well on my right foot and i mean i've hit those kind of shots before not in games okay okay so but i i thought okay let's just let's just go for it um and uh yeah it it helps also when the adidas ball moves very fast when you hit it cleanly so um no it was it was it was awesome man it was awesome i uh it's one of those ones. I don't know if you play golf. Oh yes. But when you don't really have to do a lot and the ball moves really, really well, yeah. it's almost like you didn't even feel like you hit it. It's just yes. that's that was exactly how the goal was. I didn't feel like afterward like Oof, I had to put a lot into it. It just kind of was like right in that yeah. sweet spot and and the ball moves how it should. So nice. Yeah, it was. So it was you were a golfer then? Oh yeah, I'm an avid golfer. I'm not great. But huh? I, I love golf. It's it's my it's my it's my passion outside of outside of football for sure. I love oh, nice. it. Yeah. What handicap do you play off? Uh, I'm normally eighteen. Okay. Yeah. Normally. If I'm on a good day, I can shoot a I can shoot a fourteen over or fifteen over. But that's a good day. So <laughs> normally more like eighteen. I'm I'm more like nice. high eighties. Uh, no, I don't really peek into the nineties. Not more high eighties. So that's you don't want to be in the nineties. Come on. No, no nineties. No, no, no. No. If I can get be- be- below a, an eighty five or an eighty four hmm. consistently, I'll be real happy. Fair. And what yeah. uh, set of clubs have you got then? Because this this is a good one. Because I used. I mean, I haven't played for donkeys because I've got unfortunately dodgy knees. Uh, but I used to play with a, a set of blades. And yeah. man, when you hit them wrong. Yeah. Oh, I have, so I have the Callaways, the new ones, and, uh, they're not, they're not the ones that the, the, the tour players use, but they're yeah. the step below. So it's like the, the amateur pro, um, yeah. and there's a good amount of forgiveness, but yeah, if you miss hit it, you're four fairways over and, uh, yeah, yeah that ball is gone. So, um, nice. but it's good. It's good, man. I mean, it's. I love it. I, I even if I have a bad day, I'm still out there and I'm smiling. I'm like, ah, oh, there's nothing I'd rather do on an off day than than go and shoot nine or eighteen for sure. Yeah. Have you played with uh, Julian yet? No, we're, we've been trying a lot to get out. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit intimidated to be honest. I've told him <laughs> multiple times. I mean, I know how good he is. He'll come to yes. me sometimes, like, oh, I had a rough day. I shot par or I shot one over, and I'm like, I mean, our. <laughs> our gauges of rough days are so different, you know? So, but he also plays his home course a lot. So okay. I'm one of the guys that likes to play all kinds of courses. Like yeah. I'll play this one and I'll play that one. So it's always new and I'm getting used to it. I don't really have a home course. Okay. And I feel like guys that have a home course, it, it gives them a significant advantage yes. knowing, okay, what clubs I need to play and how the, the greens are rolling. And yeah. like over Memorial day, I played three different courses and, I mean, fast what? greens, slow greens. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of different stuff. And, um, you know, so you're, you're adjusting and you're not even really mm-hmm. adjusted until like hole six. Yeah. And by then you've already dropped 10 strokes and it's like, oh man. That's so it. I'm done. Yeah. 
that's it exactly so we used to say like the four, first four holes don't really count those are like your practice holes to get into yeah. the into the 18 and then it then it starts so so I mean, I'm, we're going on golf here for a little bit but um yeah. what's your favorite type of course do you prefer like a links course or do you prefer a park course i like anything that's out in the wild so i don't like okay. uh, public courses that are like in the city yeah. i don't like courses that have houses wrote like lining the fairways is that just because you might hit one i'm not i'm not scared of hitting them <laughs> like knowing that people can just walk out and they're right there you know yeah. i like feeling like i'm way out into nature okay so um and it's difficult to find here in dc there's a lot of city courses that i'm yeah. not so fond of i have to really travel probably like 45 minutes to an hour yeah up to Maryland or way into Virginia to get those right. courses that I like. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the general. Fair. So how have you settled into the DC life then so far? It's been good. It's, mm -hmm. it's all much faster than I'm used to in, in Belgium and Sweden. And, um, it's been great. Um, you know, me and my wife are here and we, uh, we have done a lot to prepare for, our baby coming in August. So that's also been a little bit of a congratulations. A thank you. Thank you. We're expecting a little girl in August. So, oh. but, uh, the best part has been, I mean, having family next yeah. to us for the first time in a long time. So, I mean, my brother's been out here a bunch. My wife's parents have been out here, parts of her family, parts of my family. So, um, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. A little birdie told me that you were having a baby. So, so I was, trying to get prepared for some dad advice because apparently i give good dad advice i don't know I where this has come from dad. but um it, it's funny because like i'll see people now in the airport that have little newborns or whatever and i will go right up to them and be like how's it going yeah well, i mean how's it been or is this your first is this your i mean what if you, what can you suggest especially with like when i watch like things that i have to be prepared for like traveling on an airplane with a newborn yes. how do you do that <laughs> you know I've, I've not done that yet so don't ask me about that yeah. one but that's what i mean so i'll be like how did, how are you doing? You know, and, and people are very honest. They're like, yeah. it's really, tough. Yeah. you know, and rarely you get the one who's like, Oh, my baby just never cries. Like, okay. Mm. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> you know? I mean, if it's not crying, I think there might be something wrong. Yeah. it will be an issue. So yeah. But no, be prepared for the, for what we like to call a poon army. <laughs> Full on it, explosion. Oh, yes. it's, it, I mean, it's coming out everywhere. It's it's all hands on deck. You've got to yeah. get wipes. I mean, you might as well get a full packet of wipes. Thirty thousand yeah. nappies at the ready, just so you can get it get it done. Quick bath, jump in, jump out. New yeah. nappy on, job done. Now, are you a guy that uses plugs, or are you all natural? Are you just oh. taking the smell. I, I, I'm just taking the smell, mate. Okay, okay. Yeah. Everybody's plugs. who uses plugs. Oh, I know a lot of people. Use really? Oh yeah. Oh plugs wow. Can. And clothes pins. I know a couple people that are real. Yeah. What? Yeah. No. So, that's insane. Yeah. No. I. I mean, I'm gonna be all natural, but I. Yeah. I mean, you, I, I say that now. You never know. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It, you do get used to it. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. And, and to be honest, the the bad stuff is well, the bad stuff come. The bad smells come later. Right. With the salads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. When it's just if. If your uh, partner's going to be breastfeeding, yeah, that doesn't really smell. Um, yeah. Granted, it doesn't become, come out the other end solid. But um, <laughs> my my little one, he's how old is he now? He's coming up uh, sixteen months. And he's been on solid since well, since his six but uh, six month birthday. Uh, yeah. Six month when he turned that, he's not it wasn't really a birthday. Right, right, right. Um, but it's it becomes a lot easier when you can feed them solids. Yeah. Sure. You can do, you can you can do more stuff. That's the yeah. that's the bit that always got me is the fact that he was always just relying on on his mum. I know. I was, and now I'm think about much, that a lot. I'm pretty much cooking every night now. Yeah. For him, it's. I mean, we just had yeah. a, a pasta carbonara this evening. He's oh, wow. very well fed. He has oh, French wow. toast and everything. Baby's gonna sleep real well. Oh, oh fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. He'll leave that's you nice. Oh. Yeah. Well, Oh, not with that please no I'll, I'll let i'll let my wife deal with that one there you go um right anyway back to football um so we've mentioned about obviously you moving up the pitch and scoring that belter of a goal which um which i'll hopefully be playing um 
in a bit on the show. Um, but how is Lasada Bowl compared to previous uh, head coaches? What is that like? Is it more intense than you've played under before? It's definitely more intense. It requires a lot more fitness, a lot more energy. But it's a different type of energy. You know, we talk a lot about giving, you know, for example, when you lose a ball or you turn over a ball, depending on where you are on the field, giving that first five seconds, very similar to how Barcelona used to play with that six second rule where win mm. the ball back as possible. Yeah. It's that immediate press. It's like giving that full horsepower energy for four or five seconds. And if you can't do anything with it, then come back where okay. I've had coaches where it's you lose a ball in a certain area or, you know, a team is kind of already set in their shape. There's no way you're going to press. There's no yeah. way you're just set up in a medium block or, or low block and then kind of go from there where Hernan is, is all about the full blown press. And as many times as we can do it, mm. as long as we're in a good organized shape. And I think there's been a couple of moments in games where we haven't done it the best, but for right. the most part, I think teams are surprised how often we just keep going. Yeah. You, know, you have a lot of teams like New York Red Bulls who will press for 20, 30 minutes in the first half. And then after that, it's like jets off. But to go and keep doing it to the 80th and 90th minute, that really throws teams. And that yeah. makes it difficult for the defenders. The defenders at that point are like, come on, just let me have five seconds on the wall. <laughs> you make it back. So um, that's, that's a lot different than I'm, than I'm used to. But I like mm -hmm. it because I feel like every player is engaged. Yeah. In some systems, especially central defenders, their job is a lot to just kind of be moving and talking, but you have to be engaged. And it's really also clear who's not engaged because where that pass outlet gets out, it's, yeah. it was your job. Yeah. So no, like, oh, it was him, him. No, it's, it's you. <laughs> so I like that. There's a lot of accountability in that, in that system as well. Um, but so far, I, I've really enjoyed uh, that system of play uh, on both sides. Yeah. So. And is it being kind of an instruction to be really aggressive with the tackling as well? Because I've noticed so far this season, we've been giving away quite a few fouls and yeah. I've noticed you've picked up a few yellow cards so far this season. Yes, yes. Yes and no. Okay. Stupid fouls, no. And have <laughs> I picked up unnecessary yellows? Yes. I look back after the game and I kick myself like, why? Why did I do that? But the aggressive, the aggress the aggressive part mm. is necessary because... You take a player like Nani, for example. When I played against Orlando, my only job was to make sure his day was difficult. Yeah. And if you allow him that little bit of time and space, there's so much quality in these types of players, then they can they can punish you. So um, you always have to be aggressive, but aggressive with a smart you know, outlook. And I think that's still coming. And I, Yeah, I can speak on behalf of myself for sure and say there's been multiple times where it's like the first – Initiative was great. And then the tackle, whoa, take it easy, you know, way off. Or there's no need to tackle, you know. Yeah. So that that system, um, we're still tweaking that with a few guys. But I've always loved a team that fouls a lot because it never allows another team to get into rhythm. Yes, but in a, clever way, in a clever way. We've done a couple of fouls that have been in the wrong situations and it's cost us big time. Mm. But Fouling in the middle of the field, you see a lot of good teams, they always do that, especially the central midfielders. Yeah. Just don't let a team get a flow. Because yeah. as soon as they get the flow, you start to see it, and then you can feel the danger coming, and it's looming more and more. So, yeah. Um, But yeah, hopefully a little bit less of those, knock on wood, uh, going forward. So. Fingers crossed. I mean, to yeah. be fair, yeah, you're, sure. you're right. There's the, the stupid fouling, and then there's tactical fouling. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm just moving on to kind of your time over in Belgium and in Sweden, how much different is that compared to Major League Soccer? Is the style of play that much different or is it just down to the head coaches? Sweden is radically different. Sweden is yeah. very tactical and technical. The players there are very good um, all the way around. The physical aspect is much less though. Okay. And I don't know how it's been over the last three, four years. It's been a while since I've been there, but when I was there, <laughs> Um, the games were a lot less physical. It's a lot more like slow buildup and like precise uh, execution when you're in the final third instead of like rapid back and forth counterattacks all yeah. over the place. That was Belgium. So when I moved to Belgium, I was like, where am I? Because this is like kamikaze ball. Yeah. Um, it was up and back, up and back, up and back. And my first 15 games I played in Belgium, I played as a right back. So my fitness was 
nowhere near good enough to play there. I had to really like rapidly increase my stamina yeah. because I was asked to be like up the field, back to field. And I mean, in Sweden, it was like, just sit there and like, <laughs> kind of like a, a maestro central defender, just pass the ball easy, you know, but in Belgium, it was like, go, go, go. So comparing that to MLS, MLS is like a combination of both. It's more physical on that. And I've seen it this year. Like there's a lot of back and forth counterattacks and a lot of the goals come up counterattacks. It's not very often that I've watched a lot of games that it's like been a build up all the way, 40, 50 passes. And then you come to a yeah. nice chance or an opportunity to finish. Um, so I like the combination of both, but I do still feel, especially with us, sometimes we're way too hectic to go forward, like full guns blazing. Instead, yeah. it can just, all right, let's get a little bit of a formation here. Let's start to find where they're weak and yeah. then let's start back there instead of like go if you look back at like the miami game there yeah. were so many chances where we could have like really capitalized against them if like the first two or three passes out of a turnover mm. were sharper yeah. instead of like go 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 just calm two or three passes because they were way totally unorganized and yes. that's that's the kind of thing i mean so going forward but with with an idea and also with some calmness in your in your feet fair um just kind of swiftly moving on to a fan question that's kind of links in quite nicely into what we've just been talking about so uh david who's commented saying that he's thrilled to have you playing for the black and red um but he says most american players seem to want to play in europe and see that as path as towards more money and more potential to play for the u.s men's national team your move cuts against the grain so has anyone tried to discourage you from moving away from Europe back to America? Or is this something that you've encouraged and you've seen as an opportunity to impress on the local pitchers? It's a good question. I mean, I went against the grain to start my career because everybody mm. went to the draft and went to the MLS and yeah. so on and so on. And I kind of was one of two or three guys who went off to random countries and tried to make a name for myself. Yeah. And I think looking at it now, I mean, Europe is, is first of all, it's very much a young man's game. Um, not to say that I'm not, but it's, like, it's, you're pretty young. it's very focused and centralized around 17 to 20 year olds. I mean, that is mm -hmm. like the high priority. And so it's a great chance to develop a lot over there. And that's why I loved being there at that age. Um, now I am looking for, and it doesn't matter if it's in Europe or if it's in MLS, but I'm looking for an organization that I could see myself at for the long term okay. and wants to win. Um, and I, and not to say the other organizations I was at weren't like that, but they were more of organizations that are looking for players that can come in, raise their market value and be sold. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like now I'm kind of past that. I want to be at an organization where I can help build the organization, help the young players yeah. Uh, um, to grow into their potential. So I haven't really decided if I'm going to stay in MLS, go back to Europe. I'm, okay. I'm looking for something that, like I said, has that stability and foundation that, that can, I can come in and help build even more. Yeah. And so far I've loved being at DC because it's a culture that has had the past of all the championships and all the excellence of the players. Yes but has swayed away from that now into a new era and yep. definitely still has, if not a hundred percent still has the uh, outlook to be champions again. Yep. And does it come this year or next year? I don't know. Or in five years, I don't know, but that was part of the reason I wanted to come because I felt like I could help the organization get to the next step. And if my mission is only to get the club to here and that's all I do, and another player comes in and helps the club get to the next level, then, then so be it. So, but that's definitely what I'm looking for from a, from a professional career standpoint. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's a, it's a really nice sentiment to have um, wanting to bring on the youth. Um, yeah. But then, like I said, you're what, 25, 26? 26. 26. Yeah. So you're not that old. No, I'm not that old by any no. means, but I'm also not the, the spring chicken. Uh, who you're just... in that middle middle ground of a you're in middle yeah. age of a footballer's career. 
Right. Which is a great career, which is a great age to be yeah. able to still relate to the young guys. Yes. Instead of being a guy who's 36 and it's like, oh, in my generation, we did things this way. It's like, <laughs> okay, that was 15 years ago. So things is, have changed. Is, does Fred say that at all? No, Fred, Fred is, he's one of a kind. He's one <laughs> of a kind. He's the only guy I've seen really like one or two other guys that can relate so well with the young guys yeah. and yet still be an older guy. So yeah, he's the best. Right, so we're moving on to a section, and as we like to call on the show, getting to know DCU. Um, so, we've got some lovely questions to ask you, and the first one is: How long actually have you been a professional soccer player for? Since I was nineteen and a half, so six and a half years. Pretty good start. Seventh season as a nice. pro. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't know, we've, we've mentioned that you've played in Sweden and in Belgium, but which team was it that you first represented? In Sweden. I, was, I represented a team called Orbru, and it's the same team that Alejandro Bedoya played at when he was younger. So I was the second American behind him uh, to play there. And then I was also the second American to play at my club in Belgium, um, in Korczyk. There was another player that was there on loan, mm. uh, but maybe that doesn't really count. So no. we'll say we'll say I'm the first, the first proper American, first proper fully signed American. Yes, okay. yes, we'll go with that one. Yeah. Um, so, how did you pronounce the Swedish club name? Orebro. Orebro. O R E B R O. Yeah. I see. I was a, when I saw it, I thought it was a red bro or something like that. A lot of the English guys say it like that, so it's yeah. also yeah. yeah. I think you can take it however you want, really, can't you? Well, Unless you're Swedish, and then obviously there's the proper way of saying it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so my next question is, how come you started your career in Sweden? What made you choose Sweden in particular? It was pretty easy, actually. I Well, the summer before I was... I had signed in the winter, um, and the summer before that, a few months before that, I was there in Scandinavia, and I was training with a few teams in Denmark and um, two teams in Norway. One of them was Bob Bradley's team at the time. Um, And I was just basically there kind of training in between college seasons because there had been some little sniffles in the air that maybe we would be interested in him to be signed after. So I said, okay, I'll just go over and look because I really didn't want to take the MLS pass. And as I was leaving, you know, Scandinavia is such a small kind of group of, of countries that they all ha- hear about what's going on with each other, yeah. especially in the football world. So mm. there was a team or a group who was in Sweden and they had said, well, we want to bring him in. Originally they said no, but then they said, okay, we want to bring him in. We've heard he's done yeah. okay at the trials and let's see how he is. And maybe after two, three days, the coach brought me into the office. He said, I really like your style. I want to sign you. And I said, okay, well, I can't sign now. I have to go back and finish my college season, but I can sign in. In December, which worked out well because that's the end of the Swedish season, yeah. similar to the MLS. It's, it's the opposite of Europe, um, main of Europe. So, yeah, it was really simple. He told me, I, you're going to play a role directly. You're going to play in all the games, and that's that. And so I, I basically packed my bags, and I went there, and, and I did. I mean, the first three or four months were, were a learning curve, but then mm-hmm. after that, played everything, and it was it was excellent. I mean, I loved the mm-hmm. culture. I loved the, the players, and... I mean, looking back, it was it was a great decision because I had already had by the time I was 21 or 22, 70 games or so uh, wow. as a pro, which is great. Uh, yeah. As a, maybe some guy who was in MLS and got pushed down to the USL and then kind of you know gets one game here and there and it doesn't help with the development, you know. Even look at if you come through the super drafts by that by the time you're 21, you might have even been picked up by an MLS side. So yeah. You've, you've exactly. done really well there. You've had, got some valuable experience. Did you learn any any other language though? Oh yeah, I, I speak fluent Swedish. Really? Yeah. yeah, I had to learn because everything was Swedish in the trainings. Everything was yeah. Swedish. Um, when I went to Belgium, I was fully prepared to learn French and Dutch. That's the two languages that are yes. spoken there. Yeah. But to my pleasant and unpleasant surprise, I guess I could say it was all English. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there was almost like no Dutch and French spoke spoken that often. I mean, there was the French yeah. groups and Dutch groups, but there yeah. was primarily English speaking guys from other countries. Okay. So meetings and everything we had was was in English. So 
I learned some Dutch and I learned probably more French, yeah. but I never really grasped the full language like I did with Swedish. Swedish, I, I just had to. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. There you go. So um, me and Ola Kamara can speak a little bit back and forth. Him with his Norwegian or whatever yes. that is. He was <laughs> proper Swedish. So, yeah. That, um, does, do you do that on the pitch as well? Or is it just literally for, just for off the pitch that? Yeah, but he, I mean, we really don't do it that often. But I mean, I can understand him if he speaks some Norwegian. Because, yeah. yeah. But, it's similar then. I mean, yeah, the exactly. Countries are that close together. There's going to be some <laughs> crossover. Um, exactly. Yeah. So next up is you, you're currently on loan to DC United at the moment. So did you have a pick of clubs to come over to MLS or was there something in particular about DC United that made you think, yeah, that's the club for me? Well, I had had a few clubs who had offered before DC, not, mm-hmm. not this window, but like in other windows yeah. and for both loan and for buy options. And I really wasn't interested because I was quite happy with my situation in Belgium and I didn't feel like I needed to, to move. Fast forward to last transfer window when I came here, mm-hmm. my situation had drastically changed. There was a new coach in Belgium and I was not part of his plans at all, which happens right. all the time football so I said okay I need to have a move this paired with my wife found out that she's pregnant I thought this could be a great opportunity and then the cherry on top was that when Hernan called me and I said I didn't I mean this is crazy that he's the coach of DC because I know who he is yeah found out in the news that he had gone to DC United and I thought what a what a perfect scenario a Belgian coach who who I know his style very well from watching and playing against him yeah chance to get out of my crappy situation in Belgium and then being next to my family for, for a year with, with my wife having the baby. So it was really easy, an easy choice. And, and then I, like I said, once I had found out about the project that DC was trying to rebuild, instead of just going to another club, that's already, this is how we do things. And that's it. This is like a club who's very open now to changing, to get back to the top. And I thought, wow, this is a, a great, uh, an organization and time to be part of this organization. So I was, I was super excited. I told my wife, we're going. Nice. We're going. Yeah. Did she not get a choice on that one then? Uh, she was super happy about it. Okay. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was so excited because she knew I was struggling with, with what was going on in Belgium. And, yeah. And, and that paired with being close to her family again, I think all wives will take being back next to their family yes. always. Yeah. All the ones that have to travel with, with their husbands or their boyfriends to all over the world for for football with you know with our jobs and so to be back home was was a win-win for sure nice yeah so your squad number which is number four which is recently vacated by russell knaus as he announced on my show that he was doing that that was that was an interesting uh take on that is there a reason you've got number four um and if so what is that reason there's no reason i mean i was number three my whole career in okay in belgium and in sweden that was already occupied. So four was the closest one. I said, okay, I'll, I'll grab it. So <clears throat> if I stay further in my career here at DC, I'll see if the three opens back up and grab yeah. that, or maybe I stay with four. That stuff is not a, it's not a big deal for me. I'm not, yeah. uh, I'm not branded by my number. You know, <laughs> some guys are like, they have to be, you know, this number or that's it. I have, you know, I've seen a lot of players that have their number tattooed on their arm in their career. And it's like, I, I just oh. can't else. And it's like, you set yourself up for failure, my man, if you put, you know, number nine on your arm and everybody wants that number, you know, yes. or number two, whatever. So, no. I mean, you could, you could have number 33. It's two yeah, threes. but no. I mean, for me, that's not a big deal. It's not got a bit, bit overboard, is it? Number four is a proper defender's number. It's true. Happy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That is fair. Um, right. So, moving about away from current stuff, we're going to move to something where... If you could play alongside anyone from the past or the present, who would it be and why? Um, I have two answers. As a defender, okay. I would have loved to play. I still, if I know, who knows, you never know, but I would love to play with Ramos. I think he's a full package of a player. Yeah. And I think just a blast to play with and learn from. Yeah. Uh, terms of central defender if i had my favorite player of all time to play next to or just to watch with awe which a few of these guys here got to play against him uh and with him in this team was didier drogba i grew oh. up I loved him in chelsea he was yeah. everything i loved watching him and 
what he meant to the club and to his country, I was just, I was a full on Drogba supporter. So hearing the stories of guys playing against him here when he was in Montreal, makes me super jealous. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if there, I think there was a few guys I got to play with him here. Um, when, when they were at Montreal as well, maybe Felipe. If he I, was was. I was about to say, I think Felipe yeah. did. Yeah. So I'd have to ask him about that, but yeah, no. So that, that, that would be, I mean, just a, a dream of mine. Uh, I don't know. You're, Based on the look of your face, you're probably not a Chelsea supporter. I'm uh, not a Ch- I mean, to be fair, my I'm, team isn't even in the premiership, so we we'll, won't we'll even go down you. that route. I like, I like that. I like that. I'm not a Chelsea supporter at all anymore no? either. I was a huge supporter when Drogba was there. So so why yeah. aren't you a supporter anymore then? Uh, I don't know. As I've gotten older, I think I. <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird to say, but I really just support my team that I play for. And I think that sounds <laughs> silly, but I just, I love to watch football and I love to yeah. watch certain teams but when Chelsea was playing Manchester City in the final I was like I don't care who wins I just want a good game you know yeah it doesn't matter I'm not sitting there with my jersey on and I'm like you know full on in my blue kit dark blue kit um no I was just let's just have a good game and I want to see something you know interesting from both sides and it turned out to be a really nice match to watch so we'd actually talked about that before yeah. the Miami how I'm compact- right, okay defensively organized Chelsea where it was a clinic to watch. Yeah. So, um, did you manage to watch a little, the, bit, a little bit credit to them for our win in Miami? They, they were our inspiration. Oh, oh, there <laughs> we go. I mean, to be fair, that Miami game. Oh, I loved every minute of that. That yeah. was just yeah. something else from a fan's point yeah. of view. That yes. was yes. the opening 20 minutes. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The best we were, opening 20 minutes I've, I've seen for a long time. Yeah, and it's funny because we were talking about it as a team a little bit before the game, and everybody would looked very ready, but at the same time, the heat was immense and the humidity was. How hot was it down there? Uh, it was probably like eighty-five for kickoff, but then with that humidity, yeah, I mean, wet humidity, it feels like ninety. You know, so everyone was kind of like, "Oh man, like how are we going to survive this?" But I think that's why everybody was cramping at the end because everyone just went full torque in the first yeah. twenty thirty, and then after yeah. that, it was like the tank is empty so yeah but oh, not fair right uh next question um and some of the we we get to have to have a little bit of thinking time on this one because it's uh six aside who would be in your dream six aside team and now the way we'd kind of do it i know i can see your face is already thinking what the heck two I've defenders never it, by the way so no two defenders you can pick okay how do we normally do it? we do two defenders one midfielder and two forwards I know, obviously, a goalkeeper as well. Um, defenders would be Ramos and Maldini. Okay, yeah. I like that. Very solid. There's going to be no... Which Maldini? Because there's a few now. AC Milan and Maldini. Again, I'll ask the question. Is it going to be Paolo? Or is it going to be... D- I think it's Diego Maldini, your son? No. Paolo, yeah. of course. I've got I've got to double check on these. The things. original OG. And then midfield. Oof. I think the, the maestro of all time is Iniesta. I mean, mm-hmm. I think there's I think that guy does everything. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really close to saying Conte. It's really close. Like I oh. think that's that's okay. a really close second. Yeah. But I think in terms of keeping the ball, we have enough defense in the back. And then the forwards. I think five aside, one one guy I think that would be excellent would be Thierry Henry. I think that his technical skill is very underrated. He's yeah. very technically. Um, yeah, I mean, then you have to have Messi as well. I mean, that's... I mean, that is, is, it, is it should it just be like you have four and then Messi is already included? Because I think everybody would include him in your five aside. I mean, to be, to be fair though, a lot of players who've had on have not included Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah, they, They've gone about- away from the cliche. I mean, obviously, I think Ronaldo would be excellent five aside, but I'm just thinking in terms of, I mean, is there anyone better at five aside than Messi? I mean, you you need better? someone with good close control, don't you? Yeah, but you also need someone who can just, all right, you go and finish the game for us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes life a lot easier, no? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we had when I played oh. um, six aside, we had someone who was our version of Messi, and he, we were just like, yeah. oh, I just pass it to him. Yeah. He can do everything. Go do 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 do, and scores a goal. Like. Yeah. There we go. That's our plan. So, who would you uh, have in goal? 
Um, you can say me if you want to, because I am a keeper. Are you? <laughs> I'm a six foot ten keeper, but I play in goal. <laughs> How's your feet? Uh, I'm not too bad, to be honest. I, I can uh, pass the ball quite well. It would have to be down between then probably you and 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 I tell you what, I think Neuer still is better with his feet than Ter Stegen. A lot of people would disagree with that, but I don't know. I think that Ter Stegen's feet have rapidly dropped off, and There's I don't something about Neuer. Well. I don't need turnovers inside of, of thirty or let's say of twelve yards if we're yeah. playing small games. So yeah. I don't need that. Uh, so I would I'd probably say. We'll we'll do a tryout and see who between you and Neuer and, and that, that I'll goes in. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so the next one is moving away from small sided back to normal sided games. Um, what's the greatest goal you've scored? Obviously, you won't have that many to pick from, but what is the no. greatest goal you have scored yourself? Is it going to be the your debut goal for DC? In my professional career. Well, let's 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 go for professional and yeah. then let's go for any right. any time. Like you said, there's not that many. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably that I had one goal in Belgium that was nice as well. Um, but it didn't have the same emphasis and didn't have the same meaning that the DC mm. goal. Did. So we can, you know what, for the sake of it, we can say that, like, yeah. like you said, there's not a lot to choose from. So it's not like I have to retrace <laughs> 400 goals back here. It's more like four goals, maybe. So I think I looked up and I think you've scored seven. It could be. Yeah, I, I it think could. it's that, but we'll yeah. four or seven. Those it's close. Little headers in the box, and yeah. so there's nothing special about it. But yeah, yeah, that yeah. that opposite. I think it was was it 25 yards out or something daft like that that you hit it from. Yeah, when I rewatched the video, I didn't realize how far out I was. I thought it was a lot closer. Oh right, okay. Yeah, I don't know if I was just like off with my depth perception, but I felt like oh, I I can see the goal really well right now. It looks like it's pretty yeah. close. But then I look back, I was kind of like, if that didn't work out. There would have been a lot of people like, what the heck was that? You know, saying for because if you notice on the angle, Julian is like wide yes, open. On the- he is, yeah. I mean, it was like a two v one situation. I could probably have dribbled it and then laid it off to him. Yeah, and then, but that's boring. So, I mean, we've we've been crying out for attempts of goal over the last couple of seasons. Yeah. So I'd see someone like yourself having the, having at least having a go. Yeah, why not? Why yeah, not? why not? We yeah. want that shot counter up. Of course, of course. We need, we, yeah. we, we've enjoyed the entertainment so far this season. Um, so, next one. Obviously, being an American and soccer not being the number one sport in USA, what made you decide that you wanted to be a pro soccer player? It was my dad. My dad yeah. was... Well, my dad was, was a runner when he was younger, but then he got into playing soccer back in the... What would it be? The 70s. And... Um, and can you imagine how little of a sport it was then? Yeah. Um, but he just loved the game. And so when we were born, me and my brother, I have a younger sister as well. He was always just passing the ball to us and seeing how we did. And we just seemed to be very good eye foot coordination. Yeah. And from a young age, we were a lot better than a lot of the other kids uh, for whatever reason. And so, I mean, I followed in my brother's footsteps. My brother played all the way up until, until college and he played with a lot of, um, professional teams as well before actually deciding I don't want to do this as a career, which I can understand. It's not yeah. the easiest. Um, but I kind of followed in his footsteps and watched, you know, listen to stuff from my dad. And um, I didn't, I was not one of those kids that played like all the sports. I just yeah. played soccer. So I played basketball for one season and that was bad because um, the coach kept trying to like relate basketball to soccer and it just didn't work out. It's, there's not a lot of comparisons. So oh, no. Um, I stuck with soccer. And so, um, yeah, where I know a lot of kids are like, oh, I play baseball and football and basketball when I was younger. And then I played soccer for, you know, a quarter of the year. I, I played all year round. So yeah. you know, indoor, outdoor, 3v3, 5v5, 11v11, I, I did it all. Fair. So, yeah. Soccer was a huge passion then. Yeah. I mean, I just loved it. And I mean, as a kid, I got to play with all the different cultures. Uh, when I was younger, I played a lot with Hispanic kids. So I got to learn Spanish really well. Oh, wow. It needs retweaked a little bit now that I'm back in DC. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I just loved it. I mean, I loved all of the passion around the sport and, um, and I like being outside and, and playing with 
playing with my friends and, and also yeah. I'm very competitive. So that was my way of like getting my competitive side out. Yes. So, yeah. Sure. So we've, we've already talked about uh, your main hobby outside of soccer, which is golf. Yes. So that, that's answered that question, but I'm going to do a follow-up question to it, um, which I've not asked yet about our golf is have you had a hole in one yet? No, God, that would be a dream. I mean, that that's right up there with like the dream of dreams right there. It is. Um, you know, you put like, have a great family, healthy life, win a championship, hole in one. I mean, it's right yeah. up there. I mean, in right. terms of sporting achievements, it's right up there. I mean, I think even in life achievements, people that have hole in ones and they're like, oh, I have a couple. I'm like, yeah, you but... can't say that like it's normal. Yeah. I've had two. two. I've had two. Yeah. See, that's On the same normal. hole. Well, I, so you went back and played the same one and you had so, the same. So how, the, how many meters or how many yards was the hole? Uh, so the hole, it's, it's par three. Um, it has a little bit of water in front. Yeah, a hole in I mean, four. I've almost had one on a par four. Because I, yeah, I can't. I didn't go in. But yeah, it didn't. But um, yeah, par three, water in front of the green. Um, wow, what was I hitting? I was hitting eight iron, so it was probably about 155, 160 yards. Now, granted, I was a, a young teenager at this point. So I was get, getting a hold of one at that point. I was just like, oh my word. Um, yeah. So the first time I did it, it was an absolute terrible shot. I thinned it and it just hit the flag and just, and that's, I was just like, that's so funny because I went and played, like when I played over Memorial Day, I went and played with my brother. Yeah. It was just, play. hits three good shots, seven bad shots. And of the, three good shots yeah. you know they're good but they're not he's just kind of accidentally good well yeah. getting back to thinning it it was the same thing it was like a par it was a par three 152 yeah. or something same thing yeah. using eight it was all water and then green but it was like really all water yeah hit the ball straight into the water skipped all the way across the water like four times up under the green smacked against the pole and stood there like really close to going in and i was sitting there with my mouth open like if that would have gone in, you know, of all the times that I've just tried to even get this ball on the green and you put it like that, I feel like that's how the hole in ones come, though. They're just like, yeah, it's not often that you get a perfect. Back. Yes. You get a strike of lightning and then boom, the ball is, you know, yeah. it's there. So, yeah. but good. For you. Congrats. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I said yeah. thank you. But uh, I was just, that was very lucky. The second time I did it was a bit more of a, a better shot. I hit it cleanly yeah. this time. Yeah. Couple of bounces, backspin, and it went in. I was like, "That's the way to do it." I can't. That, that was a good way of doing it. Yeah. Um, right. Other hobbies outside. Do you cook? And if not, you're going to have to learn with a baby coming. I cook, but yeah. my energy levels after training are not the best. So it's normally that I'm pretty lazy about it, which I understand. With the baby coming, I have to. But good my idea. wife loves to cook. It's okay. her her passion. Yeah. So she most of the time when I kind of sneak into the kitchen or whatever while she's cooking it's like get out yes. and um i'm like okay so okay. i go out and my just to clean everything up afterward so okay but yeah coming up with 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 all our life events that are about to happen i i'm definitely hoping that she'll allow me to go into the kitchen a little bit more and be like you know, i can cook something for not yes. what do you want me to go pick up kind of thing so <laughs> no. uh, so, so when yeah. you do get that chance to cook what what type of cooking do you do Mexican food. I love Mexican yeah. food. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, my family and my wife's family. My, my wife's family is is her, part of her, half of her, her mother's side is Mexican. Okay. Uh, father's side is Italian. So great Ooh. food on both. Oh. My side of the family, we, we're Irish and French. Um, so the food is mm, not as good, but... It's, it can be decent, though. It can be decent, but we still as a family loves the mexican food culture um yeah. so i'm always cooking different kinds of tacos enchiladas um soups and anything that involves rice beans uh a tortilla you know or, or that kind of thing i'm super yeah. happy so uh, we even do like i don't know if, if 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 you're like a vegan or not or or if your wife is no. there's like great options for that as well so sometimes we'll do like oh, okay instead of having a chicken or or beef we'll do like a vegan taco with yeah. different kind of things so we love it yeah 
yeah I mean, um, to be fair, we're not vegan in any way shape or form but we have started to realize actually we do need to eat less meat so we've yeah do well we do a kind of a meat a really good chili but instead yeah. of having uh, beef in there we'll do yeah. um like five different types of beans yes so yeah. just trying to introduce that kind of and my son he absolutely loves that he actually prefers oh, yeah. the bean chili rather than the, the beef chili which oh, disappoints yeah. me because i love beef right. but, you know yeah yeah, these new age kids and if you do want to try like a really good veggie taco mm. uh vegan, there's this cheese called halloumi oh and yes you know it oh, oh. We, we it's huge over it's here the, it's the, i know it's huge i know oh halloumi halloumi is that... tacos it's actually better than chicken tacos i swear on my okay life, tacos because the taste from the cheese is so good yeah so you can do that just cut it into slices put it into the tacos or you can do the halloumi burgers so you just cut that, grill it outside, put like a little pineapple on top, and oh, it's a perfect. I've not tried oh, yeah. it with pineapple, yeah. Yeah, you have the this the saltiness of the yeah. cheese. Pineapple is like sweet, like a pineapple. Yeah, yeah. Ever had like pineapple on a burger before? Oh yeah, I've had pineapple. I mean, yes. Yeah, so you just you're talking it. to a guy who's had instead of a bread bun or bread roll or whatever you guys call it, donut. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. So- here, the new thing is like waffles. So you have waffles and then you have chicken on the inside or like a burger. And yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you've got me excited. Oh, I'm excited too, but that doesn't mean I'm allowed to eat it. I mean, if, if Hernan saw this and he thought I saw me talking about this, he'd be very angry. So. I've heard, I've heard. I had Griffin on and he, we were talking about the dietary requirements of Hernan. Yeah. And he's like, the less legs it has, the better. So that's our rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. yeah. I was just so no absolutely legs. giggling. No layer. Fish, great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nuts and beans, great. Oh yeah. Cows. If they, if they can walk away, not good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He Hernan would have been disappointed with what I had last week. I went to a steakhouse and had like three different types of steak on yeah. a sharing platter. Yeah. I was just like, I just think of Hernan when I was eating, I was just like, yeah. oh no, he's gonna be hangry. Yeah. Why did I think that? I'm I've only told him spoken to him once. I don't know. I don't know. He's watching us always. So He's, yeah, to be fair, he probably yeah. is. Sorry, <laughs> man. Sorry. Yeah. Um, anyway, moving away from food because we could talk about that for absolutely oh, yeah. ages. Um, music. Um, so if you had to listen to one album for the rest of time, what album would that be? Oh man, I'm not a huge music guy to be honest. Um, <laughs> for for forever. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Probably an album of like Coldplay or something. I okay. mean, they're just going and yeah. you know. I I love like soft electronic music that's not like house, but it's okay. like just just like good vibing music. I love yeah. that. And I listen to that most of the time. Yeah. Uh, if not, I, I like rock and roll as well, but not for forever. I mean, I need to be in the mood for that. So, um, but same I'm question. Not- interested to hear what you what you would say. Say that again, sorry. The well, same I, question. Well, for me? Yeah, question back to you. Oh, yeah. that is it. Yeah, so easy being on the side of the chair. It isn't, no. Um, yeah. I say I'm a big rock music fan. Yeah. Um, oh. That is it. Oh, geez. I never even thought about this. Yeah, it's uh, not easy. It isn't easy, no. I mean, there's... I mean, I go through phases of liking different artists. And at the moment, there's a band called Greta Van Fleet, who me and a couple of my mates who are absolutely, there's a particular song that we've, we can, I could just listen to over and over again. Yeah. But, um, hmm. I mean, if I had to pick one, in my head right now, I'm thinking of a U2, one of the early U2 albums, just because yeah. it, it, it was back when they were actually half decent. Well, like Sunday, Bloody Sunday, when they were singing Sunday, that Bloody one? Or- Sunday, uh, one. Um, so things like the Joshua Tree album, that kind of era. Oh, that was a great album. Yeah. Yeah. So that would... Well, too. It would be that. Sure. It could be Fleetwood Mac with Dreams. Oh, Fleetwood Mac is really good. That's, yeah. I don't think there's a bad song on that album. No, that's true. That's but, true. I have an album, actually. I have yes. it back in my... Oh, yeah. What, an actual physical album? Because you don't oh, yeah. see that many times now. Oh, yeah. My parents love Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. I- Actually, I'm going to throw a real curveball in here. Uh, a band called Kaleo uh, from Iceland. 
they are a kind of folky kind of band. Okay. Um, the, their first album called AB. Um, one half is kind of happy, happy rock music, stuff that you can really listen to and get into. And then yeah. the second half of it is kind of melodic. Um, so interesting. You can wish wash that bit away, but so, yeah. So now you've had three albums, but you got yeah. to choose one. Going with you two, or <laughs> I'm going to go with Kaleo. Okay, there you go. Because, well, what I've actually got the uh, physical album on that one as well. Yeah. Um, I've got a limited edition vinyl as well, so that was quite nice. Oh, there I've just go. thought of another one now. Jeez. Anyway, I could end up talking about loads of albums on that one. Um, yeah. So last question for this first section of it is, what is one thing that fans wouldn't know about you? Wouldn't know about me? Yeah, wouldn't know about you. Mm. I mean, now we know that you, you're a golfer, you've played in Sweden, you've played in Belgium. Yeah, um, wouldn't know about me. When I was younger, I, was, I, I skipped a grade. I, I guess I was smart enough to... Oh pushed to the next level. So I didn't go to fourth grade. Wow. Uh, right from third to fifth. So I was always younger than everyone else. But yeah. that's a pretty interesting fact. Oh, I guess. That's, a, that's a pretty good fact, that one. Well, Not a lot of people know. So yeah. I guess I was considered ahead of the IQ level at the time. Yeah. I don't know if I'm still like that now, but I was back then. So Fair. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's genuinely really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Me and my brother did it. So no. it was... What? It was it was crazy. Like, what about your she, sister? Did she not? No, nah, she she didn't want to go away from her friends, so she. Did. But um, yeah, we both didn't go to to fourth grade. So that's amazing how it was the same grade as well. Yeah, it was. I I don't know if it was something in the curriculum of the school system that they thought with with how much you knew already from third grade, you could probably get into fifth grade, or yeah. how that works because. Yeah, looking at the grades, I feel like it can't just be anything. Hmm. Uh, but well, I don't know. Maybe no. people, maybe they don't even allow that people to do that anymore. But yeah, well, there's no, there's no year for me on fourth grade. It's no one boy. That is crazy. So you've yeah. not had to repeat any years then? No, mm-hmm. no? no? you've done, you've done well, amazing. Can't, you can't skip a grade and then be held back. That would just be I like how? that you would. I failed like, an exam. Or really too. bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. That isn't. That would. <laughs> That, that would be a bit embarrassing. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm back, guys. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you, but I'm back. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Quick fire questions. This or that. Uh, I'm going to give you two options. You've got to pick your favorite one out of the two. Okay. So, uh, first one: Ronaldo or Messi? Uh, Messi. Messi. Second one: uh, beating the Red Bulls or winning the MLS Cup. Winning the MLS Cup. Who cares about the Red Bulls? I mean, a lot of, a lot of DC fans, but you know. But let's win a cup. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if we win the cup, we would beat the oh, Red Bulls on the way. Do, if you win the MLS Cup, you also beat Red Bulls. So exactly, both. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, do you call it soccer or football? I call it football now. I mean, seven years of doing it, it kind of gets difficult to change. But yeah. it feels weird to say soccer, to be honest. It, it's very weird. I mean, yeah. right. then I'm, we just stick with it. We'll, we'll stick with football, yeah. um, which leads me on to the next one. Uh, shut out or clean sheet? Uh, clean sheet. Yeah. 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 I've, I've heard a few commentators calling it a shutout, and I'm like, no. That's no, that's a hockey, I think. Yeah. But I've yeah. heard commentators in MLS call it a shutout. Yeah, no, clean sheet. Clean yeah. sheet. Um, <laughs> speaking of commentators, Dave Johnson or Devin McTavish? You know, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't um, really listened to either. Dave is, Dave's asked me a few questions. So I've talked to him before. Yeah. Um, so I'll just, I'll just say Dave, but yeah, no to anybody. I just, I, I don't really know the other commentators. It's, it's kind of an unfair question, but it's one I've yeah. asked everyone so far. So yeah. Okay. Um, right. That's the end of the quick fire stuff. We're moving on okay. to st- stuff about your teammates. Okay. So in the dressing room, who's got the worst taste in music? Uh, the young guys, the young guys for sure. They are terrible, <laughs> and it's all like angry music, like angry hip hop. So yeah, you know, always like, what's what's the issue? What's the deal? Um, you have, I mean, Greeny, Griffin Yao, Kevin Paredes. Um, yeah, no, not good at all. And and 
it's if it was just a little bit more upbeat it'd be great but it's too much like angry rap which i don't i don't understand why you'd want to listen to that so uh, I'm, I'm i'm with you on that one definitely yeah uh, let's get some happy vibes in there yeah i've heard yeah. um i think paul ariola has got um a bit better taste of music i haven't heard him put on his phone yet yet no? so i can't commentate on that but uh comment on that but we'll see uh, if he's yeah. not good i and then Bill, who was on earlier on in the season, uh, wanted to kick Felipe's foot uh, for his bad taste in music. Well, it's just all Brazilian music, so. Oh, right. Okay. No one understands yeah, that. It's not that. I mean, it's okay. It depends on the mood. It's not always, but it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, next one is, who's the biggest prankster in the team? Uh, oh, that's a good question. The biggest prankster who likes to joke with people is probably Mateus, uh, the sports conditioning coach. He's okay. A big, oh yeah, he likes that. Yeah, he likes I, to mess with. A lot, so anything, anything that you can reveal about any particular jokes that he's done? Um, no, I mean he he just he likes to hide GPSs from guys and then you know make them feel like oh where's my GPS and then they get in trouble for it or those kind of things or. Or talk about I don't know how difficult the session is and those kind of things. He he's just he is a prankster. He likes to he likes to make jokes. As player, mm, I don't know. That's a there's a lot of good guys are, are jokesters in the team. There's nobody that's that's a standout. I don't think not right now. Fair. I, I'll keep thinking about it. Yeah, I'm going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum then. So who's the most serious? Hmm. Felipe is pretty serious. Um, yeah. I could say myself as well. I mean, I'm not serious, but I'm not the jokester. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel like the father sometimes. <laughs> um, Get yeah. to practice it, probably, eh? Probably, <laughs> probably, between, probably between us. Yeah, that would mm-hmm. probably be the right, about the right answer. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, down to the last two now. So the penultimate question, which is, who's got the worst dance move? Um, I'm going to base it off of what I've seen so far. I can't imagine that Donovan Pines is a good dancer just based off of his size. Um, and I've seen a few moves and it's not so well coordinated. So he's up there. He probably knows I would say something about him too. Uh, to be fair, there was one, when I had him on last year and I posed him that question, he was just like me. Yeah. So he knows, he knows. Yeah. It's probably him. It, there's, I mean, there's probably a few other guys that are in there that are that are real bad, but he's the most obvious. So, yeah. fair. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's not a very good thing to say about us big people. I'm not well, about. yeah, but I mean, you, you to on, be fair, my dance moves basically on the field. That's all that matters. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, Your last question. Okay. Let's make it a good one. Uh, so this is this particular one always throws up a fantastic answer. It seems, and it is. Who's got the worst fashion sense? From the first team or from the academy? Because there's a few guys oh. from the academy. Let's go for the first team. It's yeah, it's real bad from them. Um, worst fashion. I'm trying to think of outfits that have come in on on game day. There's been a few that I've seen on on social media that have looked a bit questionable so far this season. Adrian Perez came in one time with like a what looked like a cowboy belt on that threw me big time. Uh, Cause I don't kind of see him wear <laughs> like big thing, like a big belt um, and had a shirt tucked in and he had like some oversized jeans on. Uh, that was, that was an interesting one. Um, God, what is the worst? Um, I ask how Eric's been recently. Well, yeah, but that's, I mean, it's not out of given. He knows, <laughs> knows that he dresses like very flashy. And I think, I think at this point, it's so many people who have said it. To be honest, I don't think it's bad. I think it fits his style. It's never anything. I, I, I've tried to watch him walk in each day and see like, would I own any of the things? He, never. Like not even on a typical Monday morning where everyone's like in sweats, like he has diamonds down his sweat. So Never. Never. No, I would never uh, own anything. Yes. Uh, 
which is so crazy because his personality is like so quiet and but his outfits are so loud so it's such a yeah it's a huge um yeah so that's yeah that's for sure um anybody else a lot of guys to be fair this year have done a pretty good job of dressing pretty uh for me there's a still yamil (laughs) yamil came in once uh i don't think he got the memo that we had to dress up he just wore his dc united tracksuit to the game so that was a lot of guys gave him stick for that because it was like we're home we're not traveling for this game so you know (laughs) let's dress up a little bit here um but yeah no it's we, we've only had three home games, so there's a lot yeah. of bad outcomes. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking I, forward to later on I, in the season. I like to get there early to keep an eye on who's, who's okay. going to... Who be- I'll tell you what, who the best dressed is. That's Go an on. easy one. Yeah. Is, is Jonathan Kempen. Yeah. Hands down. Suit every time. Full suit, tie. He's he, always- he, he puts the effort in, at least, then. not And he gets a dry clean before the game, so it's not like it's like the wrinkle. Like, there's a couple guys that come yeah. in with blades. You can tell it's been sitting in their closet for like three months. It's got a big wrinkle in the back and it's like a little snake on the shoulder. And it's like, yeah, come on. A little bit of, you know, yeah, yeah, formality. So, and so. so you said mentioned about the academy as well. Yeah, there's two guys. One of them, one of them, his name is Owen. He's the young central defender. He, him and the other young goalkeeper, Johnny, he's a okay. redhead. They, both shop at the same place online. It's like an online thrift store. Right. And it's, I mean, it's, it's Macklemore, but to a very extreme. So you have like nice. huge oversized shirts yes. that are like with random cartoons on them. Right. And then you have like cargo, almost like jumper pants. They look like they're going to jump out of an airplane with them, like parachute pants where they're so wide at the bottom that you almost can't see the shoe. So the, the, the leg comes straight down and you just the tip of the shoe. And it's like, <laughs> where did you get this? Like, how do you, I, I, cause I actually asked them, I was like, I don't even know a store where you could buy this type of pants. And they're like, Oh, we both shop on this thrift store, thrift shop online. I'm like, Oh boy. So those two get that kind of store lot, online. They have a lot of issues with their dress code. And oh and it's supposed to be like a pretty formal dress code, like semi formal. Like I'd say like okay. it's smart, casual. That's yeah. the kind of thing to go for. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing smart about that outfit. And it's I don't even know if it counts as casual either. That's like <laughs> below casual if there is an if there is an underneath part. So um th- those two are for sure the worst by yeah. far. Um and there's been a couple like little nitpicks that I've seen here and there. Yeah. So Fair. But I think there's a lot of bad ones to come, especially in the summer. I think guys are going to try different colors and it's just yeah. not going to. Yeah, just so. be prepared for Eric's um, bold, bold colors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I that, mean, he does that every day. So that's nothing yeah. special. It's, it's nothing new for him. No. 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 Watch, watches that are, you know, all the way up to the middle of your forearm. So it's very yeah. strange. Very forearm strange. watch. So yeah. I think it's, I can't remember who it was, but it said it's very, very, very European. His, uh, his style. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think Europeans would say well, we don't all dress like that either. So nah. I, I'm yeah. trying to think of a time when I've seen a Euro- another European dress like that. Well, yeah, and I yeah. mean Estonia. I don't know what goes on there or yeah. how. So yeah, yeah, different, there different folks. Yeah, so. different kettle of fish. Let's yes. put it that way. Right. That's your, that was your last question. So that is that is now I, we've come to a lovely, lovely end. I'm going to wrap yeah. things up now. So for those of you who are joining in on YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter, thank you for joining in. Um, those of you who are listening in on the audio, so on your podcast provider, thank you very much. Please do leave a rating and a review as well, if you wouldn't mind. Um, thank you to Brennan for coming on and joining me for this absolute awesome interview. Of it was 30, awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you. Um, and until next time, Vamos United. <laughs>